we stand at the threshold of a great dawning. Something deep within life is changing. Oh, 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 oh. An era is ending. Oh, 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 oh. And at the very core of creation, something new is being born. Oh, 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 oh. We are awakening from a long collective sleep. Oh, 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 oh. An in vitro dreaming deep within the womb of our Mother Earth. Oh, well, friends, as we look at this landscape, we might think to ourselves, this is a very desolate place, and could people actually live here? Well, directly to our front, right in that area, there's a stream, okay? Water, a source of life. And right where I'm standing at, at this very spot, is a village site. Look at this right here. There are 30 ancient pit houses right over here. This is a village site, my friends. Look at this. Unbelievable. This pit house, if you follow the wall, it comes to another wall right over here. Right over here is another wall. And right over there is another pit house. This one seems to be larger than the one that we're standing in. But nevertheless, it's really fantastic to see this structure or these structures which existed thousands of years ago. People actually lived here. So from the structure that we just were in, I'm entering uh, another area right over here. Uh, you can see over here, of course, this is all uh, a rock fall, so to speak. You could see there was a wall here. Uh, you can see the foundation over here. It goes around. And uh, if I turn to my left, you can see the remains of a, another pit house right over here. As I said, there's 30 of these structures. Uh, in this vicinity right here where we're standing there's another pit house right over there so i'm going to enter this one over here uh, you know right now if i stand at the lowest depth right here it seems to be i'm at least five feet below the wall level here's another wall right here i'm going i'm doing a I guess a 280 and what I'm going to do is show you this over here this is a rock fall from here on out or possibly from there into there you can see another pit house structure right over there um, another one to the right there's there's one to the right again over there uh, this is quite quite fascinating uh, let me walk on over to the wall of this pit house okay and uh, let me step up a here there you go here's here's another structure and you can see to the left uh, the rock fall right over there and right over there is another structure uh, as I said this is quite fascinating and so I'm standing in front of this structure and the wall over here seems to be about four feet high. Now the ground over here, now you have to remember these have been abandoned for well over a thousand, maybe 1500 years. Uh, these were much deeper than they are now. They're covered in, uh, earth has come in here, foliage, rocks have fallen in, the walls have caved in. But these are pit houses. Look at this one right here next door. Here you go, quite fascinating.
Well, friends, today, right now, as we look at this site, you might just see a jumble of rocks. But let's take a look at a nearby site that was excavated, and let's see what it looks like after it was reassembled. has gone to the south side of the village uh, to show you its profile. It's sitting on a hill, not a very large hill, but nevertheless it slopes down to the creek which is there amongst the trees directly in front of us. Now what I'm going to do is trek directly below these pit houses because often they were abandoned, leaving behind all their, I guess, implements of life when they left here. And so when the rains come, they tend to wash whatever was left behind um, downhill. Okay, one of the things I've noticed over here, I'm starting to see uh, pottery fragments. I see one over there, and uh, let's see, oh, here's one right here. Look at this. This is a pottery fragment, and right next to it over here, okay, let's see, there... Let's take a look at this piece over here. Oh, yeah, you can tell that it's been formed, it's been shaped. And this is more than likely uh, what I'll call a scraper. See right there, you see that sharp edge? So there, it would work like this, skinning or cutting. So there's a scraper there. This looks like they were trying to form something here. But look at the sharp edges that can uh, be acquired by these skills to shape stone. So, we have a pottery fragment and what I'll consider uh, two scrapers. So, we'll leave these here. What's this, by the way? Oh, look, here. here's another pottery fragment right here. Okay, so uh, let's continue our trek and see if we can find any other signs of life. Now, I'm going to actually leave these right here. I'm going to spread them out on the ground so that uh, nobody picks him up. So as I'm looking at the ground over here, look, here's, here's a pottery fragment. Here's a, let's see, well, it's hard to say, but it definitely is a piece of pottery. Um, what's this over here? Look at this. That's another pottery fragment. Okay, here's a, let's see. Well, I thought this was a pottery fragment, but, oh, look at this. It's been shaped for sure. You can see right over here the percussion points or the shaping. So this is probably a scraper. We'll leave that there. So as you can tell, that there's definitely signs of life at this very location. There's a lot of indications that life existed at this very spot. Let me show you this rock over here where people who have come here have laid down for us these objects to see, to again verify that people once lived here. For example, right over here, this is a tool. Some people say this is a Stone Age tool. It's a scraper. We have also further down here, obsidian. Obsidian was used uh, to make weapons, uh, knives, spears, arrowheads, and whatnot. So anyways, as I said, this here is a, another indication that life existed right here at this very spot. Well, friends, what we're going to do is head straight on up there, and uh, let's see if we can find signs of life ahead of us. I've followed this high ground, uh, following the creek directly ahead of us. And I came to this beautiful view spot, and look what I found over here. Look at this here. We have a Native American mortar site. I mean, this is quite amazing. Look at this over here. Uh, fairly large mortars. 
this is really incredible because aside from the pit houses, this is another affirmation that people lived here at one time. They prepared food here at this very site. So let's go follow this circle of boulders here and uh, see if there are any additional mortars. Okay, so I'm getting to this boulder. Oh yes, look at this right here. Uh, I see one here directly in front of us, and another one there, one there, and one right there. Quite amazing. So thus far we've encountered pit houses, uh, fragments of pottery, stone tools, scrapers, and now over here a milling station. Food was prepared for the village at this very site. I tell you, it can't get any better than this. Now the next thing that I want to look for are either petroglyphs or pictographs. And what I'm going to do is follow the high ground that follows the stream. And hopefully that will produce additional evidence of life. So from this position, which is adjacent to the mortars, we're going to follow the stream bed, but at the high ground level. And to my right, you'll see the high ground that we're going to take a look at. Oftentimes, the higher ground uh, was uh, ceremonial. It provided a panoramic view, and perhaps symbols were left behind. So let's venture on over there. So I've been following this high ground for about a quarter mile, and this is the high point right here. So those are the boulders that we're going to examine. Well, I see another symbol directly ahead of us. What I'm going to do is zoom in, and then later walk up there to see if we can find any other symbols. Well, as I was walking up towards that symbol, I looked down here to my right, and look at this. We can see two more petroglyphs. A galactic tidal wave of light is descending upon the Earth. As I continue to look amongst these boulders looking for symbols, uh, Here's something that I noticed again. This looks like a, a grinding area right here. Very smooth. You can see the discoloration. And so food was definitely prepared here at this site. So as we continue our search, uh, I came across right there ahead of us uh, another wonderful petroglyph. Uh, let's go take a look at it up close. So there it is up close, quite intricate. Uh, looks like a line with a circle and a dot in there. Yeah, looks like a, what we would call uh, maybe Western archaic type petroglyphs if you're looking for some sort of classification. Well, as I rounded the corner from the petroglyph that we see directly ahead of us, I took a left turn and found this again. Uh, quite beautiful, a lot of squiggly lines. People might say, uh, what the heck do they mean? Well, the truth of the matter is, uh, it's all speculation today. There was no written history recording what these symbols meant. Well, friends, as I'm walking this trail, I noticed something very special here. Look at this. Come off of that top of the ridge line and over here is the creek and so this has leveled out we're still above the creek but as I was walking the path down to the creek uh, I noticed this directly in front of me that looks like a matati food was processed over there 
let's take a look. This is really fascinating. It looks like a spiral right here. And uh, you can tell that uh, this is a grinding slick. One of the ways you can tell is by placing your hand right in here. Oh boy, I'll tell you what, it's as smooth as silk. And that's from the action of the grinding stone rubbing up against the seeds and the grains that they processed right at this very spot. So this is quite fascinating. Uh, let's see if we can find any other symbols. Well, there's another symbol right over here. Look at this. Quite fascinating. Look at that. Hopefully you can see it. You know, it's very difficult because the sun is directly on it. The best time to capture these images is actually on an overcast day. Well, I think I see some more symbols directly ahead of us, right over here. Let's, let's walk on over. And uh, there looks like there was something right there, but it's very faded, thousands of years old. But uh, I see some symbols right here, right there. Do you see those? Coming right up to them, right over here. Well, one of the interesting things about this symbol right over here, it looks like a turtle, like a Hawaiian turtle. You'll find many symbols that look like that approximate it but we're near a creek so I wouldn't be surprised if they had turtles in this area oh look at this here's another one right here can you see that really really it's always exciting to find these symbols you know to come upon them and then try to guess or think of what the people uh, were thinking of what were they trying to represent what kind of story were they trying to tell Well, as I was scanning the uh, rocks here, the boulders, I noticed this over here. It looks like a very, very large metate right over here. Can you see this? Very, very smooth. Kind of a, a large metate right over here. And oh my goodness, look at this. Here's a, another symbol. Looks like, look at this, fingers right here. Uh, antlers or maybe this is an ant. Maybe it's an ant. Well, again, speculation on, on my part. I'm trying to tie my 20th century brain to someone that lived thousands of years ago. So a symbol we see today that might represent something we know today might have been completely different a thousand or two thousand or even 10,000 years ago. Here's some more petroglyphs. Looks like a humanoid figure right there. Uh, Maybe another one right over there. Beautiful. So, we're going to head down right over there to the stream. I've had a wonderful time here in the Verde Valley and I hope you've enjoyed yourself as much as I have. Now for me one of the fascinating things about this area is the type of structures that people lived in. They had structures that were below ground, then they built structures that were above ground. They built structures that were bored into cliff sides, in other words there were caves known as cavettes. Also they built homes in these cliff alcoves commonly referred to as cliff dwellings. Now there were various groups that associated themselves with the Verde Valley. The first people that came through here were the Paleo Indians, the original inhabitants that came from Asia. Later on they were followed by the Archaic period or the Archaic people who were hunter-gatherers and then settled down into a more sedentary life into 
farming, agriculture as a new form of sustenance. In other groups that claim an association to this valley were the Southern Sanagua, the Hopi, the Hohokam, the Yavapai, and Tonto Apaches. And so you can see that this area was quite diverse in the types of people associating with it and their living style. Anyways, I've had a fantastic time, and I hope you continue to trek with me as we visit ancient sites that time has long forgotten.